speak on the issue of what I believe to be the modernized attack on fertility. And the reason I call it this is because it does not appear to be direct, like maybe old traditional ancient male dominated religions and practices. What I'm referring to are things like billboards and advertisements, subliminal messaging and teachings in schools, things we've been conditioned not to questions, question, things that greatly inhibit human consciousness. I originally wrote about this with young parents in mind, as I recognize there are a lot of stereotypes and negative notions towards being a young parent. And this is very damaging for our culture as a whole. The modernized attack on fertility, and in turn life, encompasses a lot more than just fertility. For everything comes from this ever-birthing energy. Anything alive, growing, this affects all that is. Man, woman, and child. This greatly affects our youth. When one is hurt, all is hurt. We as a culture do not celebrate, honor, or hold any regard for fertility, pregnancy, and childbearing. We teach as though having children is problematic. This out-of-sight, out-of-mind war creates great disbalance in our society. It's as though the creating and birthing energy of our place is being inhibited and suppressed. Why not celebrate and honor fertility? Why not teach this to our children? Reasons why I don't think it's having children that's a problem of this world, which seemingly many kinds of media outlets can impress on us with stigmas and disinfo about fertility, the developing human, and raising children. We all know overpopulation is myth. More like created illusion to scare you and make you feel the need to compete for life worthiness and quality of life, which is just ridiculous. And to create illusion that some life is of more value or less value than others. To impair self-esteem, which is only one minor aspect towards this attack on fertility, on life. I don't think childbearing is the problem. I don't think being a young parent is the problem. Not such as it's out to be, made out to be. Things being completely unapproachable and inaccessible for young parents and children in such a way that connection with nature and any natural acts could be deemed illegal or something you should be labeled a terrorist for or even just looked, up, looked at as unacceptable social behavior, that is a problem. Examples, bed sharing, breastfeeding, natural medicines, midwives, homeschooling, deciding not to vaccinate. I don't think ch childbearing is the problem and I don't think being a young parent is the, is the problem. <clears throat> I think it's the way that society has been conditioned and is currently being taught to deal with childbearing and parenting that is problematic. Being a young parent is a problem, isn't a problem at all, but the system dicking around with our natural rights sure screws things up for children and parents that only want to grow. It doesn't cost money to have a child. You do not have to pay for the right to give birth. You don't have to validate your decisions and choices for life or to bear life. You do not have to va validate yours or your child's existence. That's crazy. And the system and system slaves should be ashamed for continuously imprinting these notions on vulnerable young minds. Children need food, water, shelter, warmth, community, and mainly love, which is all being stripped from us. We're being convinced that we need to struggle for these simple gifts, our natural rights. These are not something we have to slave for. This is greatly illusion set before us to instill us with such a fear and shame and impaired so sense of self-worth that we become dependent on the just allowable resources that our system may choose to give us, only to be deceived and convinced that we always need to pay back more, only to become in debt. Greater debt than just that of anything financial, but debt of energy and of heart, debt, debt of mentality, of psyche, and in turn of any and all human emotions and energies. We are being convinced that we need to invest our minds and emotions, our energy bodies, into the system that only wants to keep us low and will. The most vulnerable citizens are not hard to keep in these cycles. Someone is very aware of this. We have been convinced that earth resources are lacking and couldn't possibly sustain us. These are all lies. Our mother earth is very selfless and giving to our every need and also very abundant when we choose to honor and respect her grounds and gifts, taking and sharing only what we need. I understand how it can appear as problematic to not be fitting in these boxes so kindly made for our slavery. I see how that can screw up someone's plan. Let me tell you people, children are not the problem. The way we raise them and deal with their natural behaviors and cries, as though they're unfit to be here is the core issue. Yeah. Our system in all reality is unfit for children. That is all. The system we have so blindly succumbed to is unfit for allowing healthy growth and development of our children. If you cannot see this, then you, my friend, unfortunately, have been majorly distracted. 
We are pushed and taught in so many ways that children should and need to be as separate from us as early as possible. We start them on the great divide early in life, as early as any individual can be deceived. We teach them that our earth and healing waters, nature, the woods, animals, rocks, dirt, the weather, are scary things that we need to separate ourselves from to avoid harm. We teach them disconnect with earth and nature in all her splendor. We teach them early that certain aspects in our culture are more geared to one sex or gender than another. We teach them that according to sex they are born, they are, that they are to costume and paint and embellish themselves a certain way different than others, and that certain colors are more suitable for them than others, which is just crazy. Colors are not born with genitals. Even if they were, this is crazy. We teach them to divide early as though their future in life is dependent on the ego they develop, that if allowing, and the chances for this are great, our system conditions them to be ruled by. Worse than any of this, we teach them that there is such a thing as too much connection, too much love, and to be as independent as early as possible, not allowing for the natural human needs of connection and love being met. We are starving our children and depriving them of the basic human needs that are necessary for optimum growth and development, not just physically, mentally, and emotionally, but also spiritually. I so often hear people say that, oh, well, this is just the way we've created our system to be now, so you need to learn to work with it. Why not a different approach? Why not trying the world needs to learn to work with children, birth, fertility, family, and health? Why not change the system so that fertility, infant and children's health, and growth are priority and main focus? Do we not collectively understand yet that all of our lives and future of this planet is in our children's hands? Whether you have children or not, this should be obvious truth by now. I don't think it's that hard to do, just a matter of some learning to let go to the feelings of entitlement they have been made to believe they have over this place, over these people. That saying it takes a village to raise a child, this is true and is also okay. There's no shame in needing human connection to raise a human, or at least there never should be. However, developed society has created such that we are so divided. You need to do this on your own, all on your own. Puts you down low and alone. Feelings of helplessness and disconnect from humanity and earth will surely rise amongst youth, young parents, children and infants. You need to guess and struggle to connect back with our nature, our intuition, how to raise a child. Either that or when you do need help, you are looked at as a bum off the system for needing outreach support, pure community support, or any other kinds of support that are geared towards children, prenatal, postpartum, or mental health. It is seemingly a drag on the system and all the people. To need or to ask for help or support was something that naturally humans would have no problem living with and alike with compassion and connection with one another, with sharing and wisdoms of our place. This is where we've gone wrong as a society, as a species. We have not been putting the children first. We've become afraid of what? We choose to put consumerism and ego first. We've unknowingly renounced our natural rights. We've sacrificed and our, ourselves and our children. For what? It's never too late to reclaim your humanity, your dignity, your natural rights, your energy body, to claim responsibility for yours and your child's well-being and health. It's never too late, it's all on you. Claim it because if you do not pay attention and you remain distracted, it will be taken from you. The power is all you. I would like to reference a great book I read that is all about healing and reconnecting with our natural gifts. It's called Last Child in the Woods, Saving Our Children from Nature Deficit Disorder by Richard Love. Today's kids are increasingly disconnected from the natural world, says child advocacy expert Love. Allowing yourself to be grounded in nature stabilizes your energy body, your frequencies, and in turn your physical body and mind. Let's get back to our roots. Let's honor our ground and earth cycles. This place has a lot to offer and we have a lot to be grateful for. Let's try giving to our earth and all the people our, as our home is selfless and giving to us. Let's choose compassion, choose peace, and choose love while we're here. Let's try it and see what really happens.